Welcome from the other Institute of Technology. <laughs> so it, before we start, uh, I have a bit of a confession to make. It feels a little bit weird standing up here on stage talking about Node and Microsoft because, well, I haven't ever really been the biggest fan of JavaScript. Now, don't get me wrong, JavaScript is great and, and, it's, and, and I always enjoyed using it, but I never really considered using it, I don't know, in production. And so, <laughs> you can imagine my surprise when you know, I saw everyone jumping on this node bandwagon ranging from startups to large scale enterprises. And I just couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, I, I didn't understand how you could actually like, put some of your core business logic um, and, and have that implemented in JavaScript. So I was skeptical. Uh, but now, two years later, I think, I think I finally get it. And so I'm going to try and share you know, my, my aha moment with you all. Whenever we're designing an application, um, there's more to it than you know, just making it the fastest uh, application around or um, making it as quick, as quick as possible to spin up um, a, uh, a prototype, right? There's, it's a balance of a bunch of different uh, pieces. And so the way I like to think about it is it's balanced between speed and productivity and flexibility. And uh, I think that um, Node in particular uh, is a really good balance of um, the three of these. And so I'll just rush through the, these real quickly. Um, but first, it's super fast. And you know, coming from the .NET world, I didn't totally understand this because it was like, okay, asynchronous and non-blocking by default, big deal. We have async await, um, and you don't even have to deal with callback hell. So great. Um, but the great thing about Node is that this this default thing, right? It's the fact that it's asynchronous by default means that you don't have to worry about checking every package or library um, in order to uh, know whether you can use that in your application in a performant manner. Um, secondly, you know, it's, it was built on Chrome's V8 engine and you know, VM neutrality discussions aside, that was the fastest uh, JavaScript engine at that time. And then, you know, Node itself, just like, you know, all the modules that we have in NPM, right, has this lightweight and optimized core. And that philosophy, um, you know, is, is, is uh, really uh, embodied throughout the community. Secondly, a little bit of code goes a long way. That was the one thing that shocked me so much, is just how quickly you could just start uh, getting productive um, with a new framework or with a new library. And, um, and that's because you know, of the incredible NPM community that we have, where I'm afraid to ever even quote a number of how many packages there are, because it'll be out of date the second that I say that. And so um, because of all the, and, and you can also you know, develop isomorphic applications and all that. And then the last piece is that you can develop how you want. And this is the thing that um, you know, really, like when you start out building an application, you might start out with a monolithic app. I know microservices are all in vogue these days, but um, the fact is it's easier to reason about that. Um, but then with Node, it becomes easier to kind of, you can choose where you want to be on that slider. You can choose whether you want, you know, dynamic typing or you can go to the other end with static typing and, and TypeScript and you can choose where you want to be. Um, and so that's, that's one of the things that I felt was really, really powerful. Um, is that the application really grows with you. Um, and so that's why you know, Node was so exciting, and that was that, like, click, that, that, that point that made it all click uh, for me. Um, but then the question is, you know, why, why is Microsoft interested in Node? Why, why, you know, why do we care as a company? And the answer is, and, and uh, this is, is that, well, it's no good way to say this, but it's not us, it's you. 
You're building all of these incredible applications. Um, you're building up this incredible community, and we want to support you in those efforts. Um, and we, we, we think we can. But whenever I say this, um, undoubtedly, uh, you know, the response ends up being something like, hey, Microsoft, if Node is so important to you, why don't you fix blank? And so there are three different responses that usually come. The first is MaxPath. Um, So some time ago, we decided that it was a reasonable idea to limit file path lengths to 260 characters. And we were wrong, yeah, it turns out we were wrong. Um, and we're sorry about that. Uh, but luckily there have been, you know, some, but we've been working, you know, to improve that. And uh, actually, the, the biggest improvement to that was NPMV3, and that was, um, so, which installs everything maximally flat by default, which has gotten most people around a lot of their max path issues. Additionally, um, at Microsoft, we're making a bunch of .NET Core improvements. We're also, you know, like, invest, doing some investigations on the Windows side. Um, so actually, by the way, .NET Core now um, supports long file path names, so awesome. And then, uh, yeah, so Windows, we're also looking at um, those, you know, will take a little bit more time to percolate through the ecosystem, um, but hopefully, you know, that's, that's some progress there. The second piece is native modules on Windows. So, does anyone remember this thread? Because I do. <laughs> so, the title is a little bit broad. Um, it, it, it sort of, so it sort of started with basically native modules are when you're, you know, calling it to C++ from your JavaScript, and this ends up getting very confusing for people, be, for JavaScript developers, because they're not C++ developers necessarily, and so they look at this and they're like, what is all this C++ doing in my JavaScript, and why are all these crypto compiler errors, why do they keep popping up? And it was a generally confusing time. Um, and so, that led to this issue, um, which uh, it, it, the, the problem with broad titles on issue threads is that like, it, it sort of transcended into a thread for everyone who was on Windows and was generally unhappy. <laughs> and so, as you can imagine, it got really, really long. This is actually an old screenshot. Um, I think it's up to 500 some or something by this point. And so we worked to you know, help address a lot of that. The primary issue was um, twofold. A, C++ is confusing. B, um, it was hard to actually set up a machine configuration, and that combined with the fact that C++ was confusing meant that people weren't sure where, whether it was a configuration issue or you know, an issue with the, the package itself. Um, because there are more issues than just Windows. So like, you know, Linux and Mac users, like, you get, you get to ride along with this too. Um, and so what we did was we released the Visual C++ build tools, because before um, you had to install a full-blown version of Visual Studio, and apparently people didn't like um, installing, you know, eight to 10 gigabytes on their machine just so that they could, you know, run native modules. Um, <laughs> So now this is just with the minimal set of the compiler bits, um, and so the C++ team did an absolutely fantastic job with that. Um, and then, you know, secondly, uh, we've, you know, consolidated the instructions so that there were, like, fewer, like, paths that you could go down, paths of pain that you could, you could go down. Um, and then, but, but that wasn't enough. So, you know, recently, um, uh, we just released this, um, sort of experiment, I guess it's, it, it apparently is working for most people, but um, I wouldn't say it's been like validated in every single scenario as well as it could be. Um, and that's where you guys can come and help. Um, so um, now you can install the Windows build tools right through NPM, um, and yeah, so far people are um, pretty happy with, with that. And, and the thread is closed, so. <laughs> And I actually did a bit of um, 
uh, informal sentiment analysis, it turns out that Windows users are now 41% happier. <laughs> so. <laughs> Lastly, the Windows CLI. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we've been, um, you know, seeking feedback on this and figuring out exactly where, you know, we should improve. But it turns out, really, what people wanted was they just wanted to use Bash. Um, it wasn't about like any of the features in particular with the Windows CLI. It was just like, oh, Bash is awesome. So we did that too. Um, so recently, uh, we introduced uh, Bash on Windows. So it's the Windows um, uh, subsystem for Linux. And um, so that one is preview. It, it's, it's definitely preview, uh, the status of that. Um, uh, so yeah, it's preview for a reason. Um, but, you know, we're going to continue iterating based on, you know, whatever feedback that, that we're pulling in. So, now that, you know, we've, we've gotten all of the, the tough questions out of the way, um, we want you to be as productive as possible um, with Node. And, you know, part of that is with our community contributions, but then part of that is also with building, um, you know, uh, first class development tools and environments. And so we want to bring the magic of Visual Studio to uh, the Node community. That's our goal uh, with, with much of this. And so um, we have two different offerings here. Uh, we have Visual Studio Code. Um, and actually, it was pretty cool to see a few of the demos here. Uh, we're actually using that. So that's our new free open source lightweight editor. It has debugging and IntelliSense, uh, or co code completions. IntelliSense is our marketing term for it. Um, and uh, we also, if you really love Visual Studio, we also have support, awesome support for that with, uh, there too. So that goes even further with profiling and uh, cloud uh, uh, deployments and that kind of stuff. Um, but today we're going to be demoing uh, Visual Studio Code. And um, I, we're, we're going to be, the cool thing about building developer tools is that um, you get to spend like a lot of your time, like, Testing the application means writing ridiculous applications. And so, in this case, the ridiculous application that we're going to build is a Twitter bot. Because, you know, okay, so sometimes I get a little bit nervous um, on stage, and um, I, I, I wanted to make a Twitter bot that would just provide a little bit of, like, positive, you know, inspiration. Um, and, and so see, you can see that the first thing um, is that we've commented out the, the sentience here. So the bot will not go rogue, we're not in danger. <laughs> Important. And, you know, the first thing that, you know, uh, this, this has just opened up, uh, you, we see we have, you know, package JSON, like all the stuff that we're used to. Um, and, uh, but, We've added, you know, a bit of functionality to make the experience um, uh, a little bit. So one of the tough parts with JavaScript is that, well, because it's dynamically typed, um, it you end up often running into a bunch of issues where, oh, I misspelled something, or um, uh, you know, the the type of the variable was wrong, and. Um, and so we try and help that, you with that as much as possible. And so right now you can see that I'm getting um, completions and um, right now when I'm typing, right, A can be anything because, you know, it's dynamically typed and we haven't assigned it to anything. And, um, you know, we wrote this very simple function. But now we can start using it, right, and we can say var, I guess, mult equals multiply uh, uh, one and two, right? And now, when we dot on, uh, oh, okay, I guess that's, that's not gonna happen this time. All right, um, this is a dev machine, so I can, I can see normally um, when, let me just make sure, yeah, okay. Well, my, oh, thank you, okay. I was like, I'm going crazy. Um, I'm really bad at multitasking as well, um, so uh, there we go, so multiply, um, and now, you know, we can take in, uh, actually, my bad, I want to do mult dot, and now we're seeing all the completions that are for numbers, um, and 
and, and that's just because we see that, hey, we fed these values in. Um, under the covers, we have actually the TypeScript compiler taking all of this, so whether you're working in JavaScript or TypeScript, TypeScript is basically like, you know, a really, like a, a linter on steroids, um, you can think of it as. Um, and so, um, the TypeScript compiler will take in both TypeScript, JavaScript, and uh, we can provide, you know, some element of help uh, for you there. But then, you know, once we get beyond um, some of the basic, uh, so that IntelliSense or the code completions is also really helpful um, for making better navigation. So, for instance, um, I have this, let's see, um, so get inspiration, right? Pretty important method. Um, I can go ahead and look into that and I can see all of the usages of get inspiration. And then once, you know, I have retrieved my, you know, inspiration, I can, you know, navigate back and forth. Um, so this, these are some of the things that, um, you know, we try and make sure are as easy as possible uh, for you to do um, because, you know, it shouldn't, uh, and, and, and so then, you know, beyond, um, but we haven't actually started running the application yet. Um, and so let's go ahead and, and do that and start seeing how it works. So the first thing is that we've provided a, a screen name um, and it's my, actual Twitter handle. Um, so, and um, because, you know, when, whenever I test things, I like to test them in production. So, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and uh, press uh, F5, so in this case, to launch the, de the debugger. And we'll see what's going on. So, the first thing is that we're defining a bunch of stuff. Okay, awesome. Um, and we're going to listen um, on, you know, a bunch of tweets. So, like, whenever um, I tweet, then it's going to uh, send me some piece of inspirational uh, feedback. Um, and so we're going to continue. And I think I have a breakpoint set down here. Great. So, oh, okay. Well, thanks, Ashley, for, you know, typing in the... My, my, my tweet. <laughs> um, so I do love this community, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just post that. Um, and so right now what you see is that we're going to, the first thing, oh, I didn't mention, we're going to upload an image. Um, because, uh, okay, so I, I asked Isaac beforehand, like, whether he would just give me full access to his Twitter account, and he said no for some reason, so... We're gonna have to go for the next best thing, um, which is a uh, bobblehead of, of Isaac. <laughs> so, we can go ahead and we can continue, um, you know, stepping through, and uh, let's see. Let's go, and great, we've gotten our inspiration. And so now we can go and we can look at the tweet and we can look at, I love this community, undefined, huh. That's not very inspiring. Okay, well, luckily we have a debugger so we can figure out what's going on. So let's go ahead and run that again. And we're going to this time, so we'll run past the, you know, uh, that and then another tweet. Um, undefined is not inspiring. Okay. Great. So now we can actually start stepping through and see exactly what went wrong. Um, and so as you can see, I've set a breakpoint on um, this line, which is where we're getting the status. And we're going to go ahead and step into get inspiration. Um, and we're going to go ahead, and as you can see, yeah, you know, our message is undefined, and okay, inspiration is good. Index, okay, not so good. So, oh, okay, I see. So basically, we're missing a math.floor over here. Um, so we can go ahead, stop debugging that floor. Man, people who are watching me on Twitter are going to be really uh, wonder what's going on. So, um, now we can go ahead, run the full application, and we should see that this is significantly uh, better. 
So okay. And moment of truth. I guess I could have inspected the, the variable, but feeling feeling lucky today. There we go. Oh, that's that. It's for, okay. I should have checked my messages, but no one is perfect. It's not like. <laughs> okay. Well, at last night at 2 a.m., it sounded like a good idea. So. <laughs> okay. So you know we have some uh, debugging, but we go further than that too, um, because we want to integrate this with your workflow and um, make sure that it, it's working for you there. So as you can, so so in addition to just the straight up debugging and um, everything like that, you can configure a task runner and plug it into whatever build process that you already have, and we have npm over here. Um, and then we also have the option of going ahead and configuring our debug settings. Um, so in this case, uh, this is actually the, this is the launch configuration that I'm currently running with, which just says launch node and attach, uh, you know, with, to, on server.js. But a lot of people use nodemon to restart their processes and everything like that. So we also have um, support for that there. So if you do nodemon debug server.js, then um, it'll go ahead, it'll break at the first line. That'll give us a moment to attach our um, debugger, and we can go ahead and start actually stepping through the code. And then, you know, if we change something um, to, I don't know, AG, is that, that how your handle is? AG underscore dubs? There we go. Sweet. Um, <laughs> and so we can go ahead and change things, and now it'll go ahead, restart, reattach the debugger and everything like that, so you don't have to keep switching back and forth every time. Um, so those are some of the cool features that I definitely um, uh, urge you to check out. By the way, the way that uh, we get IntelliSense on uh, some of the like node modules or anything like that, uh, it comes from a typings file, um, the definitely typed uh, file, um, which you can get by going to doing typings, install, um, and so if I wanted to use Express, I could use Express, but I forget typings is new. Um, way of, uh, it's like DT, squiggly, I'll try it, but I don't think it's gonna work. DT, squiggly, express, and then was it global? Is that, is that right? I don't know. I never knew what that meant. I just, it was like the thing that you typed in afterwards. But I think they might have changed it. Oh, yeah, it was sentient before. Or no, not, not sentient. That was, uh, that, that was the, the robot. Um, okay, so. Um, globals, express, and then now if we start, you know, referencing express, var express equals require um, express, you know, we'll start getting some completions there um, that are appropriate to that library. So all of those are contributed uh, by the community, and we also have some level of um, static analysis to do like JS docs and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, that all is great if you're running, um, if, if you are uh, running your application, um, you know, locally, but not so great if, you know, something happens during uh, production, which brings us to, uh, I think I have a slide for this, time travel debugging. So marketing has apparently gotten, you know, better for us. We used to say things like IntelliTrace, um, or actually, marketing hasn't gotten to this yet. That's why it's called that. Um, <laughs> So uh, before we get into that, a um, few like preliminaries. Uh, so um, how many people here have heard of Node Chakra? OK, awesome. Um, so for those who haven't, um, it's uh, basically, you know, instead of using V8 to power as the JavaScript engine to power Node, we'll, we um, you know, are trying to make things VM neutral, and we're using Chakra. And, um, and so we've started uh, working on that. Um, everything is totally open source, um, and you know we're working with the community on that. Um, now, one of the um, you know advantages of, um, or or one of the things that we also have been doing on the side is MSR had been working on this you know time travel debugging, and it's actually been around for a while. This concept, 
Um, it's been around for uh, 20, 25 years now. Um, but the main holdback there was always that it wasn't very performant. Um, and so, uh, you know, like it would add, you know, two times, it, it, it would uh, double the, you know, the, the application um, latency by like two times. And so um, now we've actually gotten to a point where uh, we're able to, um, uh, so now we've actually gotten to a point where um, we're able to make things a whole lot more um, performant um, based off of some new research from MSR, which basically is like, okay, well, the runtime is doing a lot of work for us. What if we used some of the runtime um, information that it's collecting um, in order to um, make things easier? And so um, one of the, the cool um, things that you know, has come out of that is, um, uh, so for instance, like if you're garbage collecting or something like that, um, then after you've garbage collected, we know that's probably a good time to take a, a snapshot um, so that you will be able to replay that in the future. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, running the application, and let me just make sure that I don't have... All right, awesome. <laughs> okay, time travel. Um, and so we can go ahead and uh, post that. And how did I end up there? And so right now, let's see the status of the application. Um, let me go ahead and just retry that since I think I'm... Okay, time rave. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Good enough. Okay, awesome. Um, and so... Right now, it's gone ahead and it's actually recorded um, uh, the, uh, the process. And we've seen that we got this. See, that one is more inspirational. Nice tweet rather than nobody is perfect. Um, <laughs> and what we can do is now I've configured it so it'll actually just go ahead and replay um, rather than, uh, than, um, than running it locally. And you can see that it's hit this uh, status, and so we can actually jump back um, and uh, see, like, like, basically you can actually jump back in your state um, and see where the application was at. So um, right now, you know, we see the status, uh, and right now it is, come on, uh, undefined. We jump forward one more, and we find that it's at mousetraps, nice tweet. Um, and so this is really useful. We're hoping that it'll be used for like debugging production, you know, machines and everything like that, um, where you just can't reproduce that problem. You're dealing with a bunch of other, you know, web uh, servers and everything there. So that's the time travel bit, and then I'll wrap up um, right now. But that's pretty cool, right? You can step back in the debugger. Um, and so. Yeah, if you're interested in just like more of the technical pieces of it, um, then uh, I'd love to, you know, be happy to chat after the talk. Um, and then have a few more, you know, resources. So if you want to learn how to make the bobblehead uh, application that generates all the bobbleheads, you can go to aka.ms slash bobblehead app. Um, and we also have uh, a set of just general guidelines for working with Node. Um, uh, ranging from hello world to s dealing with Windows issues to dealing with native module issues. Um, and uh, here's a bunch of links to our uh, tooling as well. And so um, lastly, I want to um, thank you all for, um, you know, basically being awesome. So keep being awesome. Um, and all these projects are open source. Um, and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. and. Um, especially if it happens to come in the form of a pull request. Thanks. <laughs>